so uh, uh, good afternoon to you all uh, i will start presenting so uh, from the slides i will be doing the doing the presentation So, so the so the talk today is uh, titled as pattern recognition and classification basic concepts. So these these two broad broad topics in some more uh, <clears throat> details shall be covered today. The basic concepts, the the nitty gritties, the the statistical and the and the mathematical foundations will be uh, covered here for both pattern recognition and the classification part since this forms the basis of the learning systems subsequent classes will uh, will uh, uh, require the the background of both this pattern uh, recognition and classification together but in but in different forms therefore a a broad broad discussion uh, a, in some some detail on the pattern recognition and the classification part is required so first we start with the pattern recognition part there we will be roughly talking about the the definitions of pattern recognition components of pattern recognition and uh, and the basic methods of uh, pattern recognition so definition of a uh, of a pattern we can we can roughly say that a uh, <clears throat> pattern could be a piece a body a group of items uh, so on and so forth uh, that has some that has some commonality in a uh, mathematical form that can be uh, represented by a vector uh, small x so this small x will be representing a pattern vector where there can be a number of uh, pattern samples small x1 small x2 dot dot uh, until up to build up to small uh, xn so here these can be uh, representing uh, biometric patterns these can be representing the eyelid these can be re representing a speech and this can be representing a face this can be representing a uh, gesture or a hand so all these different forms of real life uh, real life patterns can be uh, can be covered by a pattern vector that small x so the uh, so the fundamental uh, link between pattern recognition and classification lay in the fact that we can have a group of samples like say a b c d uh, written together so the recognition and the classification part will require that these these categories uh, the categories formed in the sample set must be separated out as category A or as category B or as category C like that. So the, the fundamental task that a pattern recognition classification system does is that it separates out the categories in a given set of samples. Now there are distinctions between classification and clustering. Last time we have uh, talked something about supervised and unsupervised classification now uh, classification uh, into categories is mostly a a supervised phenomenon that is a supervised process therefore in a supervised process we normally have a uh, a uh, prior knowledge and with that prior knowledge we um, uh, group the we group the uh, we group the samples we group the uh, categories into separate separate classes but there are some uh, prior reference prior uh, <coughs> labeling or knowledge is required but in the case of the clustering part or uh, or where there is a, is an unsupervised uh, component there is no previous knowledge there is no prior prior labeling there is no prior uh, prior know-how regarding the 
<clears throat> pattern classes regarding the uh, pattern samples. Therefore, they they do this classification or this group of technique carries out the classification by finding out the commonalities between the components, between the groups, between the subsets there in the pattern sets. And this, this part is done by doing clustering. They will find out the commonalities between them. They will find a sample mean and around that sample mean, the samples will start to start to group and they form a cluster. So these are the two, two fundamental differences uh, that separate out classification and clustering. One is based on the supervised principles and uh, the remaining one is based on the unsupervised principles. Now, the main, main purpose of doing a pattern recognition or a classification is to separate out the data that belong to different classes. So if you have new, new data, so you, you, through that pattern recognition or pattern classification system, need to find out the commonalities of the data and then group them into the current category. So here, supposedly, there is a gender, gender classification uh, task, a gender classification problem. So in that gender classification, how we do the gender classification, that, that is to be decided when we configure the pattern classification or the <coughs> pattern recognition system. Then once we configure it, we need to train it. And then when new, new data comes in, if that is the face of a female that will be placed in the female gender category, and if it is a face of a male that will be placed in the male gender category. So that way, the, the fundamental purpose of doing pattern recognition or pattern classification is to separate out the data <coughs> and then place them into specific categories uh, by, uh, by uh, Taking into account certain, certain common common features, certain common characteristics, certain common uh, properties, and place them in the specific group or category or class. So, where we use pattern classification or pattern recognition, we quite commonly use them in the OCR technology, the optical character recognition system. So most of the uh, the PDAs, most of the most of the scanners nowadays have an have an OCR component nowadays. They are, these are used quite quite commonly in in the in the biometrics domain, biometric based verification, then diagnostic systems, medical diagnostics, and lots of them are used in the defense sector. So uh, so real life, real world is full of uh, pattern recognition. Uh, uh, tools, pattern recognition uh, systems. So they are used very, uh, very commonly. Now, how we do it? There are several techniques. Summary of them can be through two, two broad ways. One is called a generative way, and the second one is called a, uh, a discriminative way. The, the fundamental goal shall be to use a pattern vector and map it to a class, to a class. So the, so the pattern vector can have a, a representation by this small x, and the class level can be w. So in the case of the generative model, we need to have a, have a, a statistical model or a, or a mathematical representation where we need to calculate the joint probability of p of small x and small w make predictions by the use of the Bayes rule. There is a Bayes conditional probability theorem. We need to use the Bayes, Bayes conditional uh, Bayes rule or Bayes conditional probability theorem to, to calculate the probability of W given X. And then while we do that, we, we need to find out the most, uh, the, uh, the most likelihood probability uh, belonging to a class with a level W. So while, while, we, while we calculate a uh, probability value P, uh, P of W given X, we need to find the maximum uh, probability value of P of P of W given X uh, for, a, uh, for, a, for a particular uh, pattern small X. We need to find out the maximum probability of a class P, uh, 
plus w, and then find out the conditional probability p of uh, p of w given x. If we can find the uh, find the maximum probability linked with a class w, we can say that the that that particular pattern belongs to that that particular class w. So this is the the fundamental principle uh, behind the generative uh, generative model of doing a pattern recognition. Then in the discriminative way, we we need not have a specific statistical model or a mathematical representation p small p of x of w p of small x and w we we need not uh, have this statistical model uh, we just need to have a uh, we need to uh, determine p uh, p of w given x by learning a direct mapping from the pattern vector x to to w so we need to here uh, have a discrimination boundary, a decision boundary. We need to calculate discrimination boundary and pick the most likely class, class level W, so that the discrimination boundary is laid best, or the discrimination boundary is formed best. So in case of the discriminative uh, uh, way of doing pattern recognition, we we need not have a prior uh, a representation, mathematical model, or a statistical model. We just need to learn the way of, uh, of direct mappings from small x to w. So if we can do that, uh, and we find the best, best way of laying the boundary, we are sure we, we will be doing a very good pattern recognition. So this is these are the two broad ways of doing uh, pattern recognition so how how to how to model uh, the the p of x and w so this is normally done with the with the statistical tools mainly you will find a uh, probability density function broadly a gaussian function will serve the purpose therefore you can have a uh, probability density function given uh, by this by this gaussian function for the male class and red one representing the female class. So this is the, the training condition. So the so, so the testing condition will will require to find the best match between the probability density functions between the male and the, and the female classes. If it the test uh, test pattern comes close to the male class, that will be a male face. And if it comes close to the female class, then that will be female face. So that way we can do the, <coughs> the classification by the use of this statistical model as uh, done by the generative way of doing classification. So here the key, key challenges shall be the intra-class variability. That means if we are dealing with the with the letter t so there can be lots of variations of the t so that is one of the one of the one of the challenges with which the statistical model may find it hard to deal with and then we can find the interclass variability so both uh, both letters and the and the numbers can be can be mixed or can come in a mixed way so how to separate them out so these will be the key challenges now in the in the practical case in the in the practice all all pattern recognition techniques are are broadly classified as statistical pattern recognition structural pattern recognition and the learning based uh, pattern recognition that are based that are uh, run with the help of the of the ann or nowadays uh, deep learning tools now, in the in the statistical pattern recognition, there will be a, a learning uh, statistical uh, tool, a statistical model, so that 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 particular statistical model uh, will uh, will cover the basic uh, basic uh, considerations of uh, statistical pattern match, and then grouping them in uh, specific classes. But in the in the structural class 
or the or the syntactic class there there shall be formal formal grammar or there there shall be formalized structure there will be specific grammar uh, there will be there will be decision trees there will be there will be there shall be binary trees and all the combinations of, of grammar the the binary trees and the and the decision trees will be together uh, try to find out the best match and then do the do the recognition part but, but there in the case of the ann there the there there the classification is done based on the on the learning part so a a, a set of uh, a set of statistical or or mathematical neurons grouped in layers will be will be learning and will be uh, <coughs> uh, mimicking the biological brain and work in a connectionist way so that no direct mapping is required uh, so, so no no uh, no statistical representation is required to do a direct mapping from the pattern side to the to the class side. So uh, here uh, we we find that uh, that the learning based tools are very much uh, resilient because the dependence part is less. The, uh, the dependence part on the sources characteristics, the statistical nature of the sources do not play a very significant role. So the so the basic concepts shall be there will be a, there will be feature vector. There will be a built-in state uh, in the in the uh, pattern represented by small y and there we need a decision rule q that will map the the feature vector x to the to the to the class y and this will be done in the three three different ways one will be the statistical way one will be the syntactic way and the third one will be a learning learning based way So here we can uh, we can talk about how a how a classification can be done. So we can have two sets of two sets of features, one one linked with the height and one linked with the weight. Uh, so the height and weight can form a feature vector of a jockey hop star recognition. So here we have a built-in state y. Uh, that is represented by h and j is a is a function of this uh, h and j um, parameters and the uh, and the feature space is r square so since there are two two different types of types of uh, um, features so they will they will represent a two, two dimensional uh, space and then we have a we have a classifier that that particular classifier will uh, will Will classify between the class uh, the capital H and the and the capital J if this this particular norm is uh, fulfilled and J if this particular norm is norm is fulfilled and uh, and the line and uh, and the decision boundary uh, shall be shall be demarcated by this this particular norm uh, Wx that is the weight weight and uh, and the pattern vector x plus b bias if that is equal to zero so that will be that will be discrimination line between the two, two classes and they will uh, they will make the discrimination between the classes by the use of the of the features uh, by the use of the of the feature sets a simplified form of the pattern recognition system can be if we deal with a uh, deal with a uh, um, set of set of Letters. So from the raw raw data, we need to do the pre pre processing. Then we need to do the uh, do the feature selection. Then we need to fit into a model, a statistical pattern recognition or a pattern recognition model. And once the once the model part is uh, verified, we need to test check its uh, <coughs> reliability. So this way, uh, we can we can formulate a pattern recognition system that can work in a supervised uh, a form or an un unsupervised form. Uh, so, uh, so the final goal shall be to have uh, raw data grouped in this way and then uh, shape, in, uh, shape them finally into, into discriminative features which will uh, separate, out the, separate out the classes. 
so in in the in the pattern recognition system there are several components the first one is a sensor sensor will be a basic sensor is a camera or a or a microphone sometimes you can have a, a proximity sensor or a thermal thermal camera or you can have a temperature sensor light sensor and so on and so forth so the so the sensor will uh, be uh, doing a pickup of the data and then feed it uh, to the subsequent stages of the of the system so it is now since here the uh, the pattern recognition sensor will will depend upon the bandwidth resolution sensitivity uh, distortion and so on and so forth therefore some amount of uh, pre-processing is required so therefore the most most common uh, pre-processing shall be to to remove the the noise all the all the unnecessary components may be may be uh, may be uh, removed we can do low pass low pass filtering we can do uh, a uh, a boundary sharpening the boundaries may be sharpened uh, so uh, so that the structure of the fish can be seen more more clearly so this part is done normally then we can do the uh, we can do the have a uh, <coughs> labeling between the between training or a discrimination between the the training and the testing data set so we need to uh, group them in such a manner that there is a diversity uh, in the in the samples and that will help the the system to learn learn better and learn it in a more more detailed way so the so the features should have some very key, uh, key key points to note. So while we do a feature selection, we we need to uh, keep in mind that a that a feature must have some very uh, <clears throat> distinctive uh, characteristic. So it must have uh, a, a quality factor. Since the since the distinctive uh, characteristic will help the uh, feature capture the most uh, uh, special detail or description of a particular pattern so to so to make a distinction between the patterns we need to have very distinctive or very high quality characteristic so that it can be linked to a to a particular class and that way we can we can have a separation between the between the classes we can find that the that the that the features may be symbolic that it represents color or we can even find the uh, the features to be uh, to be uh, uh, to be number based or numeric so that can be height so height uh, and and color can be two very known type of known type of features which can make distinction between the between the classes now the now the combination of the of the feature of d numbers of features form a d d dimensional column uh, column vector all the feature vector now the now the space that this d d d dimensional uh, feature vector covers we can call it a a feature space and when all all the all the features are represented in a uh, in a scatter plot that particular scatter plot is a a uh, is called a feature uh, <coughs> feature scatter plot so therefore we will have here a feature vector and we will have a uh, multi dimensional feature vector then we will have a scatter plot and we will find out the uh, the classes being shown very clearly so therefore we can find that a pattern is composed of traits or or features that will be characteristic of a particular class so in the in the classification task we can have a pattern pair uh, of of variables small x and w where the x is a collection of the of the of the features and the w will be a concept behind the 
behind the label or observation. <laughs> so uh, there, there we need to know uh, how the good features and the bad bad features are are distinguished. So a good good feature and a bad bad feature are distinguished. Good good features and bad bad features are <laughs> distinguished when we uh, find that. Uh, the, that the features uh, facilitate a uh, a satisfactory grouping in the in the specific classes, and they are separated well by the by the by the discrimination boundary. So so here in the good good features, we find that the that the features are uh, are well laid. In both sides of the both sides of the boundary, so they are they are they are grouped well, but but there in the case of the bad bad features, we find that there are not sufficient uh, uh, discriminating characteristics for which we can have a or we can lay a satisfactory decision boundary to separate them out. Now more uh, more very uh, popular feature properties are they should have linear separability they should also have nonlinear separability and <clears throat> separability they should be high there there can be highly uh, correlated uh, features we can have even the multimodal uh, features so these are some of the more popular feature properties now, how to do the the feature selection? Now, to have uh, to select good set of uh, features, we should first find out if the if the features have some uh, discriminative properties, if they have some uh, some discriminative characteristics. So, uh, so the discriminative characteristics must uh, <clears throat> permit us to to define good good features or to define Bad, uh, bad features. We must have one more type that is called the, called the invariant uh, features. That means uh, if there are geometrical uh, or geometric transformations like translation, rotation, and scaling, there should not be any variations in the in the um, feature properties. So uh, so if they if they if these um, characteristics are are found to be uh, to be true for a generated uh, <clears throat> feature sets, these particular feature sets can be learned uh, by learning based uh, systems, and these can be used subsequently for doing a proper classification. Now there are ways to form uh, form multiple multiple. Uh, <clears throat> features because these play a very significant role in the reliability of a of a pattern recognition systems. Now we quite frequently find that very simplistic features may not yield very reliable uh, reliable performance. So therefore, the use of combinations, the use of feature combinations, may yield better uh, better performance. Therefore. You can you can have a, uh, a say combination of features like lightness and width. So the so the so the so the so the lightness and width can be quite uh, um, quite reliable in making making discrimination between the C C fish like the Solomon and the C C bass. Therefore, a uh, a combination of of features give us very satisfactory uh, performance. So, how many how many uh, how many features do we need, or how to how to fix that number of number of features we need? Uh, we need how to fix that. So that that there's no such specific rules yet. We need to we need to carry out some uh, statistical trials to find out the number of number of features that will be good for our work so therefore uh, we need to find out uh, if uh, the number of number of feature sets that we have selected uh, will be quite uh, quite 
difficult to form or if or if that will be uh, that will be computationally very uh, very demanding to have a lot of now a huge set of uh, set of um, <coughs> features we we need to find out the difficulty level and uh, and the computational requirement while we fix the number of number of features that we will use in a uh, <coughs> pattern classification problem then further we we need to find out uh, that if there are uh, there are um, correlations between the between the uh, the features because the because the correlated features might not give us very satisfactory uh, results then there is one one big factor that if we want to use lot of lot of uh, features and we have a huge set of features we should be very much uh, <clears throat> conscious regarding the cars of cars of dimensionality because the cars of dimensionality uh, is a detrimental factor for the design of a uh, reliable pattern recognition system now now the now the cars of dimensionality generally will form or will come up to the to the uh, to the forefront when we use too many too many uh, too many features now if we use too many uh, too many features the pattern recognition system finds it hard to make the make the discrimination therefore we need to have a cause or have a uh, have a restraint between our requirements and uh, and the number of a number of um, number of features we are taking for a for a particular uh, pattern classification uh, classification problem and therefore we need to have smaller sets uh, uh, smaller sets of uh, sets of features uh, uh, say taken for smaller tasks for smaller sets of goals to goals to reach therefore uh, this 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 cars of dimensionality since is a very serious factor how we link the selection of the number of features that is a very critical question to deal with so we we can have uh, sometimes we face that all the all the features that we want might not be there a, a missing set of uh, set up um, features might be there while we take the take the take the features all of the all of the features might not be not, not be captured well or might not have been captured well so we might miss a few number of number of features therefore the therefore the classifier must have sufficient amount of uh, resilience and and capability uh, <clears throat> built to it so that it can train well when we face a a uh, condition where we miss a few of the required required features and that particular resilience of the classifier will give us a satisfactory performance despite the fact that the that the feature set might not be a complete one now now while we while we deal with all these all these pattern classification problems or uh, the selection of uh, of features and we have uh, been familiar with the statistical neural and the syntactic types of pattern recognition problem in the in the statistical class in the in the statistical type our um, our goal is to find the class conditional probability so there will be a definite statistical representation in the in the learning or in the in the neural pattern recognition part there is no such uh, statistical pattern or a mathematical representation beforehand required for do the, do the learning uh, but it will need need data and a and a labeling uh, of the of the classes and a and a linkage between the, the data and the, and the label classes syntactic there will be formal formal grammars or uh, or relational descriptions like graphs through which the pattern uh, recognition is done. So a, a simplified form of the 
of the uh, pattern recognition system design uh, perspective can be shown to be like this so if it is a learning based one so this a will be uh, will be will be converted to a digitized form this in the form of uh, this in the digitized form will directly go to a learning based system that can be a neural network and if we do a statistical pattern recognition then we we need to find out all of the statistical uh, properties or the or the features and then we need to find out the maximum uh, class class conditional probability and if it is a structural or or a syntactic uh, pattern recognition problem we need to we need to go through the, the formal grammar uh, and the, and the syntax to do the pattern recognition problem so uh, a very a very simplistic type of um, uh, pattern recognition problem can be to do a or can be to have a have a design which uh, requires the uh, the recognition of the of the letters like say L P O E Q, so we can do it with a three three structured classifier. So we need to find out uh, some here, some here. We need to find out some uh, some say some say features like the vertical straight lines, the horizontal straight lines, the oblique straight lines, and the curved lines. So this will lead to the lead to the formation of a of a feature set. So this particular feature set in this tree type of structure, we can uh, go stage by stage. So yes, no type of uh, type of decision making will lead us to the to the generation of P E L Q D uh, Q uh, Q O. So this type of a tree a tree base or a tree structure classifier is the most simple form of uh, <clears throat> pattern recognition design so all such things all such all such pattern recognition problems will have these uh, these um, stages data collection feature choice model choice training and its its e evaluation so through these uh, the the system should go now now in this part while we do the do the classification while we do the do the feature selection we we need to guarantee uh, generalization because uh, generalization uh, is key for dealing with diverse uh, diverse variations that are quite common in the in the real world in the real life situations so we need to have a classifier that must have uh, that must have uh, <clears throat> features that can represent sufficiently all the all the novel uh, novel patterns. So, if we want to put stress on the on the generalization uh, characteristics of a particular pattern recognition system, we must have more more training samples. Uh, we might uh, sometimes have simpler models uh, to yield better better performance but uh, we we need to have generalization capabilities which uh, which prevents uh, which prevents memorization because because memorization will not will not permit us to deal with real life situations so so generalization uh, will lead to situations where a very complex model can be can be simplified to a, a straightforward demarcation between the between the classes like this. So, uh, so uh, here we will roughly, broadly, uh, or shortly uh, talk about the classifier. Next set of slides are uh, are dealing with the classifiers. Classifiers will uh, group and. Uh, Group the classes into into specific groups or into into specific domains uh, by uh, by resorting to the the calculation or by by uh, resorting to doing certain uh, rule based uh, rule based discrimination. So here 
while we have a set of uh, set of set of features in all type of type of pattern recognition system we will have certain uh, certain uh, discriminative functions that will uh, that will calculate cost functions that will finally decide to uh, to uh, to the specific class to which a uh, a uh, a pattern set may belong or to which class a particular pattern may be mapped so we can uh, we can have a broad broad representation of the of the classifier uh, to be to be like this where we can have a x to be the to be the feature vector uh, fed to a number of uh, number of uh, discriminating functions so these so these discriminating functions will be forming the forming the classifier block so one one particular uh, discriminant function will be will be favoring one one particular class for a particular feature belonging to a class. So that that particular discriminating function giving us the uh, the, uh, the maximum detection probability will will result in the in the particular uh, classification or particular uh, grouping. So this way. A, uh, a set of classifiers will with a set of discriminant functions will do a uh, do a mapping from the from the uh, feature space to the to the classification space now the most uh, most common or the most naive or the or the most uh, popular decision making is the is the bayesian uh, decision making that is a, is a is a statistical technique. Is a statistical uh, representation is based on a statistical uh, representation. The the task shall be to uh, to formulate a decision rule so as to minimize the Bayesian risk of R of this R capital R of Q uh, with summation of all the um, of all the states Y and of all the all the features this x such that it uh, it maximizes the probability of x uh, in in combination of y uh, scaled up by a weight uh, vector w by a weight function or a or a function w uh, loss loss function uh, w where we have a decision rule q of x Given y and y uh, functioning functioning together, so for a for a particular class where this q small q uh, will will minimize the Bayesian risk uh, defined by that particular uh, form will lead to the Bayesian decision making, and uh, and uh, Bayesian decision making is based on this this particular Bayesian risk. Uh, a, uh, a successful classification is based on a on a minimization of this Bayesian risk. So a Bayesian task uh, can be uh, to have a loss loss function uh, loss function w q of x and y uh, if uh, if that one uh, that that one can have a value zero or one uh, if specific conditions are are fulfilled so that that particular bayesian risk uh, will lead to a solution of the bayesian task where we find q star to be taking a value of r uh, that will be that will be maximizing the the conditional probability p of x given y when we know the probability of y and probability of x so this this particular solution of the bayesian task is a prerequisite for doing a proper uh, classification. So this will lead to three types of situation. We can find that the, that the training may not be not be proper. So if the training may not be uh, <coughs> proper, the decision boundary may not be laid well. So the so the samples may show us a crossover from this to this zone or from this zone to this zone. Then we can have a very good good fit like this, where the where the classification 
boundary is laid well with a few number of uh, crossovers shown. So this is this 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 particular good fit is the most uh, desired state for us. And we find a third state where it is nearly it is quite perfect. All the all the discrimination is done very well. A, a perfect um, uh, discrimination. Now this particular situation is a representation of the of the of the memorization. That means that the that the classifier or the recognition is a biased one. Therefore, this particular situation can be can be considered to have lost generalization, and this is not not desirable for a reliable pattern classification. So uh, we can roughly summarize in here the difference between the, the statistical and the structural uh, pattern recognition. Uh, for, the, for the statistical one, we can see that the, that the foundation is based on the statistical decision theory, while for the structural case, we find that is based on uh, human, uh, human perception. And in the case of the case of the statistical features, you need to have uh, have quantitative uh, quantitative features, fixed number of uh, uh, number of features. But but then in the case of the structural one, you need to have the morphological primitives, variable number of primitives. It will be capturing the primitives uh, <coughs> relationship. And will depend on the semantics from the primitive coding part. And in the case of the statistical one, we have the statistical uh, uh, classifiers, but then in the case of the structural one, we we do not have their classifiers, but that is based on on parsing with syntactic grammars. So how to how to deal with the statistical uh, performance through post processing so we can uh, we can see quite uh, quite frequently uh, that uh, quite uh, in real world situations there are there are cases when we can do post uh, post processing which can help us to raise the level of the classifiers uh, uh, classifiers performance sometimes from the from the classification we can find that in a sentence like this some of the some of the letters might not come, might not be might not be uh, uh, visible clearly. So in that case, we can do a uh, a post post processing to raise the raise the performance level. Because if we use this particular as the as a response from the from the classifier, its uh, reliability will go down. Quite, quite frequently, people use post-processing to raise the level of classification performances. Uh, so then, then people have used an ensemble or group of classifiers to raise the raise the performance levels too. Uh, so uh, we can find a number of number of classifiers uh, combined together, being fed with the same type of same type of uh, type of features. So one one particular classifier will give greater priority to one type of feature, while a different classifier will give priority to a different set of set of uh, uh, features. But finally, when we take the mean of of performance of all the classifiers, we find that the that the performance of such a a composite uh, classifier set goes up, uh, and it helps to uh, build better pattern recognition system. Then cost of misclassification is quite a serious factor. Uh, so uh, we we can uh, we can see that if we talk about the fees fees classification problem, so we we can find mis uh, misclassification taking place when we when we classify a sea bass uh, when it is a Solomon. And we then make a wrong, wrong recognition of the Solomon when it was it was different. Though it helps to to prove that the that the classification is a is a bias free one. Yet the yet the misclassification finally lowers the, the classification 
classification performance. So this we should get rid of in most of the most of the situations and have a uh, have a mechanism through which the cost of misclassification should be lowered. So, um, so to so to lower the cost cost of misclassification, we must sometimes use our prior prior knowledge to help uh, to make the classification performance better. Then, uh, while we do while we do classification, we need to think about the uh, about the pattern recognition systems a scale in in terms of features patterns and and categories so the so, so that the so that the computational complexity uh, is uh, um, uh, say maintained at a proper proper uh, <coughs> level therefore we need to have certain certain uh, considerations for a for a trade off between the comp uh, the computational complexity and the and the performance derived from the from the system so uh, so will there be will there be challenges to have to build a general purpose pattern recognition uh, a system to have a to have a perfect pattern recognition system it shall be very uh, difficult uh, but we we can do a uh, can build a system that can do well, uh, provided we we note that different problems require different uh, different features. Different features might yield different solutions, and different trade-offs need to be need to be formulated to deal with different uh, uh, pattern classification problems. So if we can uh, can. Uh, can guarantee these these particular conditions. We can build a, a build a pattern classification system which will give us reliable performance. Now let's go through the classifier in some more more detail. Though I I have talked about in it, it in uh, some some detail. Uh, so this is a a terminology that we can skip. Uh, though uh, we can say that a a classifier will use a vector, a sample, a sample, a vector from a sample, and then uh, 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 by by considering its uh, specific characteristics, will formulate some some classes. Uh, while it while it formulates the classes, it forms some class class codes, and uh, this is done during the during the training part and during the during the testing part. The same thing will be done. Features will be coming in. A sample sample vector will come in, and the sample vector vectors uh, match shall be done with that with a training state. The best match will fall will fall in the specific class. So the so the decision uh, boundaries shall be separating out the the classes. <coughs> So, uh, so there, there should be sufficient amount of discrimination capability through which the, uh, the, the uncertainty between the samples that come in, a, a, a come in as a composite form can be, uh, can be separated out or can be, uh, can be reduced. <coughs> so, uh, so here, most of the, most of design uh, classifiers must have a generalization ability uh, so that so that during the during the testing time most of the training time characteristics are are displayed and it's and its reliability is um, proven to be satisfactory for use with real world samples so we need to have uh, for most of the most of the classification problems or or classification models we need to have decision region boundaries. We need to have uh, probability density functions, and then we need to have uh, have the have the posteriori uh, <coughs> probabilities. So for most of the for, for for all of the all of the classification problems, we have uh, the when the decision. Uh, region boundaries need to be need to be defined. We need to have the 
probability density functions and we need to have the have the posteriori probabilities for a particular model of classifier to work satisfactorily <clears throat> so the so the decision region boundaries can be can be linear those can be non non uh, non linear for the for the linear type we should uh, remember that can be dealt with by uh, by the binary trees or the decision trees but for nonlinear uh, cases, more more complex classifiers uh, shall be required to be to be formulated. Then uh, then the then the probability density functions are key because with the with the probability fu <coughs> density functions we can we can relate a particular sample x uh, to a class class C. Therefore, we need to define a uh, a probability density function p of x given c. Now we we quite frequently or sometimes we need to have the prior uh, probabilities probability of c, and that 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 can be calculated from the from the given database or the or the number of number of classes. Therefore, if we have a classifier that calculates the probability density functions. Then we can say that this model uh, will uh, will take a, uh, a classification decision uh, by by taking a vector x uh, such that the class class maximizes or the class maximization decision is based on a maximum uh, value of probability of c multiplying uh, <coughs> probability of small x given c. So if this if this uh, Particular probability is uh, maximized for a particular vector x. Then we say that that particular vector x will be will belonging to a particular class C. Then, uh, <coughs> then posteriori probabilities um, can be can be calculated where we find uh, the we find the probability of p. Uh, we find uh, <coughs> probability of C i given x. So all the so uh, so that that we need while we do the do the classification and if we want to want to uh, uh, reinforce our decision then we need to calculate the posteriori probabilities so for a for a particular class uh, c uh, so that is being here represented as probability of ci given the, the vector x. So if we can have a have a have a maximal value of uh, probability of p p c i given x, then we can say that uh, the that the class decision is uh, correct because here we have found that the posteriori probabilities are are maximized. So in in most of the most of the cases the Posteriori probability definition p p of c given x is defined by calculating by doing a Bayesian conditional probability calculation where we have p uh, <coughs> probability of the the feature vector x given c then we that is the that is the likelihood likelihood function then we have to have a class prior probability p of c then we have a have a predictor prior probability p of x so that way we can calculate the posteriori probability and and finally the uh, the posteriori probability will take a shape of p uh, c given x that that means p uh, p of small x1 given c multiplied by <coughs> probability of, uh, of small x2 given c multiplied dot dot probability of small xn given c multiplied by probability of c this particular formula will be will be uh, required as a posteriori probability uh, calculation for reinforce our decision regarding a particular class so how do we link it so uh, we have a data y so we 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 calculate likelihood function. Keep that in mind. Uh, so once we keep that in mind, uh, that means uh, we 
uh, we roughly have uh, a picture of the of the likelihood function so we keep that in mind so then we find a a uh, a <clears throat> posteriori uh, <clears throat> probability so that a a uh, posterior probability will help us to reinforce our decision but that will be again used for uh, formulating a a priori uh, <clears throat> probability which will will strengthen the belief that we have in our mind so the mind here can be a can be a classifier so we we normally in the in the biological case we formulate a likelihood function from a from a data we keep that in mind and then from that when we do a reclassification then we we calculate a, a uh, posterior probability means it is most likely to be the true true class uh, that finally uh, will help us to learn the class better will help in formulating a a priori probability which will reinforce the belief in our mind so that way our brain functions now how to do the do the uh, do the modeling part in the case of the in the case of the classifiers so there there can be fixed fixed models there can be uh, can be parametric models and there can be non parametric models so uh, so the fixed fixed models you know the the pattern and the and a classification mapping beforehand so you just need to have a have a have a threshold uh, fix and then draw a decision boundaries once you uh, know the know the mapping between the 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 pattern and the classes the the growing of the decision boundary turns out to be dependent on the on the relationship between the the patterns and the classes then you can also calculate the probability density density function and then reinforce the decision by doing a, a calculation of the posterior probability this way uh, the fixed fixed models will work fixed models generally are very comfortably used when we are considering binary decision making or simplistic decision makings uh, where uh, the where the class count is less or the or the data variation is not not uh, not used so here is a static scenario so in this in this particular static scenario you can use a fixed a fixed model quite quite well because uh, all the all the speed speed considerations are are fixed so you can very well make make adjustments between the between the cars so if there are three three different cars car a car b car c so you can uh, you can distinguish between the cars very well by the use of the static uh, fixed fixed models so these are good for static scenarios but these are not good for dynamic scenarios because the because the conditions are here are here changing now for such type of case uh, so here is a here is a depiction of a fixed a fixed model of a classifier so uh, you can have uh, a face a face recognition face recognition problem so the so the face recognition problem will have fixed number of uh, faces to deal with so that way you can uh, you can train a classifier you can formulate a classifier and have here a a discriminating function which will be making discrimination between the between the features and that way find out the, the differences between the Cases. Now, uh, now for more more complex cases, you need to have the have the parametric model. Now, uh, now parametric model uh, will will require some uh, some definition or will require some statistical property of the source. So, if you have data coming from some source, you need to have a statistical uh, representation. A a parametric characteristic of the data coming from some source is the fundamental prerequisite for forming the parametric uh, classifier so you can have here the have the uh, <coughs> parametric uh, parametric models uh, formulated by linear linear discriminant function where there there can be a longer longer feature set 
by, and those are scaled by by coefficients like a b c d with a with a bias term d and then you need to uh, define a a pdf a uh, probability density function uh, which will be used or, uh, or that can be based on a multivariate gaussian function since it is a it is a parametric one and it is um, dealing with some uh, statistical property of a of a particular uh, source therefore uh, we need to have a pdf and for that particular pdf we can use the multivariate gaussian function and then we can uh, we can reinforce our decision uh, by uh, by calculating a posterior probability which can be done by the use of the logistic regression function so here is a here is a definition of a linear linear regression done uh, by the use of the of the parametric model so you can have a multivariate linear relationship between the the variables y and x represented like this so you have the the input variables x and y to be the output variables and uh, the and the and the w's are the three three parameters weights and the and the bias terms so this way we can formulate a multi multivariate uh, linear relationship between the, the variable y and the variable x so in the in the matrix notation the same thing can be represented like this so you have here a y so y in a more more detailed form for the for the class class notations we can write like this this x can be also uh, shown like this uh, then w can be shown like this and uh, and uh, and the bias terms j or b can be also written like this then we can find sometimes that uh, for the for the parametric multi class multi class problem we use a uh, logistic regression uh, now this this particular logistic regression is based on a definition like this y is equal to 1 by 1 plus uh, 1 plus e, e, e to the power raised raised up sigma so the sigma value can be a summation of this w not um, a bias function and um, and a summation between the weights and the and the pattern feed so this we can use for doing a logistic regression for a for a parametric classifier this can be quite beneficial for dealing with a multi-class problem now non-parametric non models are meant for real world situations you do not need uh, you need characteristics of the of the data source uh, you just need to have have data need not be concerned regarding what are the what are the features what are the statistical uh, statistical characteristics of the of the of the data coming from some source so um, these these models of varying smoothness and and complexity are generated and are uh, the one uh, that are uh, that are best suited for for generalization uh, generalization purposes so non non parametric models are generally best suited for uh, generalization uh, situations <clears throat> problems so here you can have non non parametric models being built uh, for decision boundary uh, decision region boundary where you can use learning vector quantization k nearest neighbor classifier decision trees you can use or can can calculate the uh, the pdf by the use of the gaussian mixer model or the, or the parsons window you can further calculate the posterior probability Multilayer, multilayer perceptron. We will be speaking about the multilayer perceptron in our next next class. Uh, then we can have the have the radial basis function. One more type of the ANN. Then you can have a group method of data handling. So these are some of the some of the tools or methods through which you can calculate the posterior probability for non-parametric models. So here is a, a, a depiction of a non-parametric model. The most common linkage between 
the, the feature uh, or the samples or the patterns to the prediction requirement is through the through the classifier. Now, if uh, so, that that can be a straightforward uh, straightforward relationship, uh, and um, and that that particular uh, straightforward mapping uh, between the between the the <coughs> patterns and the classes is determined by the by the classifier, but it is done through <laughs> through a calibration or training training process. Now, now this particular training or calibration process will determine the performance of the prediction stage. Now, if new new data comes, uh, or if you have or uh, fix a class uh, class level, uh, then then in that that particular situation, the the classifier shall do one more one more calibration and make make variations in the in the process so that the, so that so that there is sufficient space for the changes taking place and the, and the prediction process takes care takes care of all the all the changes that have taken place so uh, we can uh, here have some have some comparison between the three different types of models that we have uh, talked about so if we speak about uh, the non 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 parametric model we need not think about the the distribution characteristics so uh, so time time failure conditions uh, will not be much of a factor because there we are not not considering the, uh, the distributions then semi semi uh, semi parametric sometimes there are semi semi parametric considerations uh, we, we can find that time and failure will be a function of the co covariates therefore uh, for both time and failure cases no no distributions are uh, specifically considered but for the co covariates some sort of distribution characteristics are to be required or to be generated but for the for the parametric case um, we will need statistical uh, statistical model we need to have some statistical uh, characteristics to generate the classification performance so so parametric models uh, will roughly require the probability distribution for the data and learn uh, learn parameter from the data you can talk about the naive base classifier and uh, and the linear uh, regression to be the best cases of the of the parametric classifiers and non 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 parametric models no fixed number of uh, parameters are required the k nearest neighborhood classifier or the an are the best cases uh, of non non parametric classifiers so in the case of the case of the parametric the most commonly used methods are the are the are the linear regression logistic regression unimolar gaussian non non parametric lots of cases that propagation radial basis function k k nearest neighbor most of the uh, most of the neural networks are non non parametric near, nearest nearest class not most all of the all of the neural networks are non non parametric classifiers nearest uh, nearest <coughs> clustering binary linear decision trees uh, till up to learning vector learning vector quantization there are many uh, non non parametric there are many uh, and techniques that are used for non non parametric classifier design and uh, with these these many these many classifiers we find that the that the decision boundaries are laid differently now for a for a decision tree multi multi model uh, <coughs> decision tree we will find that the, that decision boundaries can be uh, laid differently quadrant wise neural network they can be non linearly varying then support vector machine you can find that for a for a gaussian gaussian kernel these are nearly same as that built by the neural network and for the random random forest classifier you find these have some similarity with the decision tree because random forest tree is also a variation of the decision tree classifier 
there are some practical constraints uh, with with regards to the memory uses training time and the classification time so we can find that if we use the linear a linear and uh, and logistic regression you can find the memory use to be very low unimolar gaussian uh, very low memory back propagation low middle basis function medium memory uses uh, k nearest neighbor it's high gaussian mixer model medium nearest clustering medium uh, binary linear decision tree low uh, projection uh, pursuit low uh, all 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 these are normally low and high but with the case of the parsons window you find that the memory use is quite high because that is a window based technique we will be speaking about that then uh, then and training time we find that the linear uh, logistic uh, regression trains quite fast and the, and the um, unimolar gaussian uh, fast and medium speed training back propagation slow riddle basis function medium k nearest neighbor no no training is uh, required uh, all these are between fast and slow we can find that the parsons window trains quite fast and learning vector quantization is somewhat slow so there are specific dependence of memory and uh, and uh, training time we find that the that the classification time of the linear logistic uh, regression is fast unimolar gaussian fast back propagation very fast riddle basis function medium k nearest neighbor slow gaussian mixer model medium nearest clustering fast medium uh, binary linear tree very fast project shun pursuit is fast maximize clustering medium mars fast gmdh fast parsons window slow money vector quantization medium so uh, so we can find that uh, that uh, and between linear linear regression and uh, logistic uh, regression there should be a comparison both tend to construct the decision region boundaries we find uh, that both of them have some benefits since they are quite uh, straightforward to deal with design and then build the the pattern and the class uh, relationship and uh, and uh, <coughs> disadvantage is that they have limited complexity on the on the on the constructed boundary and this can lead to mis miscalculation or mis misclassification <clears throat> similarly for the for the for the binary tree binary and uh, and the linear trees you also tend to build the uh, the decision trees quite well they are quite straightforward to uh, design say, and they help to uh, create a proper pattern and uh, <coughs> response uh, relationship but they have limited complexity of the the constructed boundary and the tree structure may not be globally optimal then we can talk about the artificial uh, neural network briefly for for comparison purpose though we have not studied them in much much detail uh, most of the feed forward structures and the and the real basis functions are uh, quite well uh, to lay the, the decision boundaries but they are drawback is that they take long training time support vector machine um, has quite satisfactory generalization uh, capability then unimolar uh, gaussian these use the use the bayesian uh, base base uh, conditional probability decision uh, the drawback is that more in some some cases we we find that the that the distributions might not be not be gaussian and at that point of time when we do the do the classification based on the uh, on the calculation of the gaussian probability density function we may not get satisfactory uh, uh, performance so so gaussian uh, mixer model modifies the unimolar gaussian in a way that the that the pdf is estimated by a weighted mean of the 
multiple Gaussian. It's quite it's quite beneficial. <coughs> Key nearest neighbor uh, is quite uh, uh, it gives satisfactory uh, performance in while laying the decision boundaries, but its uh, classification uh, reliability is low, uh, and large storage is required. So the so the nearest neighbor, lots of data required. Slow slow neighbor um, uh, lookup. So the search part makes the, the computational uh, complexity go up or become high. So Bayesian classifier. It is the the, the statistical classifier. It's, it is based on the Bayesian uh, uh, theorem, but its performance when we build it on the uh, on the decision trees and the selected neural network classifiers, its uh, performance can be controlled or made, made better. So we will not talk much about that. Finally, we, we can find that uh, all of the decision making is based on the Bayesian theorem, that, that conditional Bayesian theorem of uh, a posterior probability of a Hypothesis H, we need to find out. So P probability of this H given X. Uh, when we know the probability of X given H, we need to have the probability of H and the probability of X separately. So this can lead to proper classification. <coughs> uh, 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 just uh, so with these, with these, uh, so our final goal shall be to uh, go go towards a go towards a naive Bayesian classifier, and if uh, this particular function uh, needs to be uh, needs to be uh, maximized, this particular class probability decision needs to be maximized. So before I end, I would like to request you all to raise one or two questions. Uh, so Maya has one question. Yes, please, please, please ask. Uh, may you uh, come back to this slide when you talk about uh, parametric and non-parametric models? Parametric and non-parametric models. Here, here, yes, parametric. Uh, the, the next slide, please. Yeah, uh, so uh, uh, you said that uh, 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 may you go back one slide again? Back. Uh, yeah, this slide, yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I mean that uh, maybe it's not, uh, I, I would try to explain it uh, before yes, the slide. Yes. So you said that uh, neural networks, they're not uh, parametric. Not, not, yes. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I mean that uh, if we if we fix certain model, we have some certain uh, set of weights. So maybe uh, suppose that these weights uh, they are parameters, and that we want to estimate, or is not right. Uh, means means mainly the mainly the parametric case. You you find. That you need to have lot of statistical uh, statistical characteristics. Uh, you need to calculate the first order uh, statistics, second order statistics, fourth order statistics, like this. So these these things complicate the classifier classifier structure. So in the case of a neural network, all these will be will be dealt with by the by the neural network itself. So you just need to have the have the data. Neural network will take care. So therefore, neural networks, hence they are so much, uh, so much uh, popular. So neural networks, that why, that's why uh, became so much, uh, so much popular because they do not require the statistical nature of the data. You need not care what the type of data is till the data is there. That is the that is the reason. But with the with the 
with the parametric case you need to have lots of statistical uh, um, preparation beforehand so hence the hence the difference uh, so uh, in parametric case we need to have some suggestions about the dis distribution yes. of our data yes yes yes, 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 yes okay yes. yeah thank you yes thank you So if there are no further further questions, I would like to stop. Thank you to you all. Meet you soon next next Thursday. Okay. Thank you. Uh, dear yes, Professor yes. Salma, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.